Welcome back to Tales Arcane, where we talk about D&D, TTRPGs, and fantasy storytelling. And today, we're going to talk about descriptions and narration. This is an area where a lot of DMs, and especially a lot of newer DMs, can struggle a little bit when they're starting out. A lot of people feel that they don't have whatever innate talent is needed to vividly describe the environments around the players, to bring the fantasy world to life and transport their players away from the table and into the, the world of the game. Now, this video is going to be quite simple. I'm going to just cover a couple of key tips about how to approach descriptions to make it easier for you and to make it more impactful for the players. Up top, I want to mention that I'm quite comfortable as a speaker, as maybe you can tell. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be uh, verbose and speak on camera, and I can kind of think on the spot as I'm speaking. Uh, however, that's not an essential talent for descriptions. You can be very comfortable speaking without necessarily being able to quickly devise and describe an environment vividly enough so that your players feel that they're in that environment. That's a separate talent. And that's something that I don't think is necessarily innate. Sure, some people find it easier than others, but I think there are a practical implementable tips, the ones I'm going to give you today, that I think anyone can bring in no matter what their confidence level is as a speaker. And you'll see that these tips are, are in some ways about slimming down descriptions and making them shorter and more effective rather than about adding more detail and becoming more verbose and grand in your uh, description style. Uh, also, before we jump in, a quick apology for the delay between this video and my last. Uh, I dropped my camera and busted the lens and it took about three and a half weeks to get it fixed, but the good people at Sony finally got it fixed, sent it back, and uh, we're ready to roll. So now, let's talk about descriptions. To begin with, I think there are two kinds of descriptions in D&D, and I want to just quickly define those before we go forward. One kind of description is functional descriptions. Now, a functional description is something you're telling your players not to give them a sense of the atmosphere and the, the mood of the environment, but to give them essential information to operate as players within the environment. So if the players step into the hallway of an abandoned manor house that they're going to explore, they need to know how many doors lead off of this hallway. Is there a staircase leading up to the upper floors? Uh, you know, is, is there visibility in the hallway or do they need to have their dark vision or torches to, to see? These aren't things that are about uh, transporting your players and, and getting them excited. This is more about just giving them the essential information they need to make rational decisions as players within the game. I'm going to assume that most people watching this video can do that. Uh, you can look at a map in front of you and say to the players, uh, yes, as you step in the door, you can see that there's a staircase in front of you. There's a, a two doors off to your left and one door off to your right. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about the second category of description, which is uh, what we might call atmospheric description. This is stuff which is somewhat supplementary to the essential features of the, of the environment, but still is useful to add because it will make your players feel like they're there. This is the stuff about the smell, the lighting, the mood of a place, the, the exciting descriptions that transport the players from the mundane environment of the table that they're playing at into the fantasy world that you're all collectively creating together. And that's going to be the focus of the video. So, focusing in on this kind of storytelling, atmospheric storytelling, the key tip I'm going to give you, and we're going to talk about other stuff, but this is the most important tip. We're doing this up top because I don't want to waste your time. Um, the, the, the important tip is focus on one or two small descriptive elements that represent the environment as a whole. What I, I, I call these uh, atmospheric indicators. So these are one or two small details about the room from which the players can kind of surmise what everything else looks like around them. Because remember, the players have an imagination and that is a powerful engine that should really be doing most of the work for you. Your job as DM is to feed just enough into that engine that it can spin in its wheels and generate a fully realized environment for the players. When the players think, wow, you described that so well, I feel, felt like I was there, what they're saying is, you gave my imagination enough to transport me and make me feel like I was there. It's them who transports themselves. You just need to give them a little push. And we give them that little push with one or two uh, environmental atmospheric indicators. So what would an atmospheric indicator be? It could be something as small as uh, a, a smell as you enter the room. You step into that empty hallway of the abandoned manor and you smell rotting wood. Now, 
that on its own, not particularly exciting. But you say, you say, oh, that that smell hits you, the the, the kind of damp uh, odor of rot and decay uh, assails your nostrils as you enter the room, or however you want to put it. And uh, then you also add in something else, like for example, the light. You say uh, the light is very weak. This very sort of thin, watery light is pouring down through the the dirty window above. Uh, it can almost barely get through the dirt on on the window uh, above the door. Now. That's all you really need to say. The players step into what they know is a big hallway in an abandoned building. They've already got kind of an image of what that looks like. They're then told two very specific details. There's a smell of damp, rotting wood in the air, and the light is very pale and weak as it struggles to get through the dirty windows in the hallway. Now, that might not seem like that much, but for a player sitting at the table, that is enough for their brain to start filling in the scene. Now, different players will interpret that differently. One player might think, Ah, the uh, the rotten smell is probably coming from the floor. It must be wooden flooring underfoot, maybe nice old varnished boards that have started to rot over the years. Another player might assume that the floor is carpeted and think that the rot is the is the smell of the, the rotting uh, wooden panelling on the walls. Now, it doesn't matter. You've not mentioned whether the walls are painted, plastered, panelled, whether the floor is carpeted or wooden boards, but you don't have to. Every player will have a slightly different image of the room in their mind. Uh, the key thing is that you've given them a couple of key indicators that they can use to run with to fill in the rest of the space. Now, of course, you can add more information if you wish to. You can have as many of these atmospheric indicators as you want, but just having two or three will be more than enough to immediately lay the, the groundwork on top of which the players will use their imaginations to build the rest. I like to focus in on a couple of key areas. One is light. I always think light is a great atmospheric indicator to lead the players into the environment with. Is the light a warm glow from a crackling fire, pale light from the, the moon or the stars, an eerie glow from the fungus and the, the river that the players are crossing, whatever it is, describe Describing that light will immediately start to kind of lay the foundation. And you can add in another environmental indicator, another one that I really like is smell. Now, smells are very evocative and they're very easy to just drop in at the start. You don't even need to refer to them again, but the players will remember those smells as they go through. So a smell could be a very comforting thing. For example, they step into a tavern, they can smell the, the smoky smell of the fire, perhaps the, the fat of a, a leg of mutton dripping down into the flames as a beautiful dinner begins to be prepared over the hot coals. Something like that, you mention it once as the players step in, that will stick with them and that will start to add to that sense of oh, we're in a cozy, safe environment, food is on the way. I've probably been in somewhere where I've been able to smell like smoke in real life, perhaps a campfire, and now I'm imagining that in this setting. Now, light, smell, the other one to think about, sound, obviously. So uh, players are going to be very receptive to sounds and often when we're DMing, we might actually have some sounds going at the table. For example, uh, uh, sort of an eerie music track in the background, uh, a sort of tavern ambience track, whatever it is. But don't be afraid of moving beyond that, having those sounds, but also telling the players about one or two key things. For example, they're in that abandoned house, you tell them about the wind moaning through the, the holes in the, the roof above. One mention of that, and the players go, oh yeah, this is kind of like a haunted, spooky vibe. It's maybe a bit stormy outside, the wind is howling, there's holes in the roof so no one has uh, maintained the place for a while. Immediately that starts to add something. You step into a busy tavern, sure you've got your, uh, your one hour tavern ambience, going through YouTube, but at the same time, you just mentioned something like the um, the soft uh, strum of the, the harp being played by the, the fireside by a minstrel, or even better, my personal favourite, the tap of rain against the glass, that sense of coziness, you realise that the rain is coming down outside, but you're inside, you can smell the fire crackling and you can hear the rain tapping on the glass. A couple of little mentions of like that and you're done. You've got the environment. You don't need to tell the players how many tables are in the room. You don't need to tell them what color the landlord's apron is. You can if you want to, but from my experience, players forget that stuff really fast. The key thing is to just put them there with a couple of key indicators and then let them do the rest. The way I like to think about it is players aren't stupid. The players 
can kind of imagine what a tavern looks like. They've probably seen movies or video games where a tavern has been represented or a haunted house or a forest has been represented. They know the basics. What they need is to be reminded how it feels. Uh, one small just additional tip that I find quite useful is if you're struggling to come up with atmospheric indicators, go online and Google some fantasy art images of the sort of environment you're looking for and then stare at those images and try to just imagine a couple of the, the effects you might get stepping in there. What would this place smell like? What, how would I describe the light that's coming in here? And what would I hear as I stepped into this environment? And just try to jog your memory or your, not your memory, but jog your imagination by looking at those images. Uh, I, I find that really helps for me, especially if we're going into an environment where maybe I've not run something before. We're going into uh, a Feywild market. I'm like, well, what would that actually sound and smell like? I Google Feywild market. There's a billion beautiful images there. I stare at them for a while and something comes to me. But yeah, I hope that's been helpful. I know that the topic here was quite kind of uh, simple in a way and I've not gone into like 10 top tips but I just wanted to really kind of convey this idea of simplifying your descriptions down and conveying just enough to let the players imaginations do the work because we need to remember that as DMs it's not our job to do everything it's our job to stimulate ideas and adventures for the players and let the players kind of fill in the blanks so uh, don't be too hard on yourself if you, you can't describe things like Tolkien just yet, you know, that will come later. Anyway, that is the video. Thank you for watching and thank you for sticking with the channel during the, the content dry spells. I'm so glad to have my camera back and to be able to make videos again. You can expect a lot of content in the uh, the coming weeks and months. Also, a big shout out to my Patreon backers who have very, very patiently waited while I was finishing off a really big project for them. It's called the uh, Academic Compendium, and it's essentially Dungeons and Dragons, but set in a sort of dark Gothic university. Uh, I, essentially, Strixhaven but uh, more horror and less whimsy. Uh, there's some wonderfully dark monsters in it, uh, illustrated by my uh, the wonderful artist Dave Guy Draws, who does all the, the monster art for my uh, Patreon supplements. And uh, if you're interested in that, or any of the 700 pages, I think, 700 pages that I've put out on uh, Patreon, you can head over there, link in my bio, all the usual. But in the meantime, thank you for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next video.